Looking good. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yep. Nice. Yeah, you are, this is technically my, uh, my dining room that's been converted to. I'm hiding out in my son's room. <laughs> 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 nice, nice. Well, anyway, um, so I just wanted to invite you here to, to talk about the bot project we've been working on together. Um, I'll briefly introduce myself and we'll just get a kick off. Okay. Yep. All right. Hey guys, I'm uh, Dustin Dye, founder and CEO of Bot Copy, and I've got one of my favorite clients, uh, Jim Lucas, with me today um, to talk a little bit about bots. Uh, Jim, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell the world what you do? All right. Uh, as you said, my name's Jim Lucas. Uh, I work for Genentech in South San Francisco. Um, uh, just a quick about Genentech. It's a biotech company. We're one of the early uh, pioneers in biotech. And I work in uh, clinical operations um, and specifically within clinical operations, I'm in system support. We have, I don't know, somewhere around 10 to 15 different systems that we support that help to enable um, the clinical trials. So when, when we're uh, working to get a drug um, approved before the FDA has to go before clinical trials, um, where we have people test out the medicines and make sure that that they're working as we expect and uh, make sure there's not any serious uh, uh, side effects or things like that, or if there are, then we note them. Um, so uh, there's all these systems that uh, hospitals and clinics use to, uh, to capture that data when we're running the trial. So, uh, that's really what I do. I support all those different systems. We've we've been working with each other for a little bit now. The project slowly changed because of everything that's going on with COVID. But what what initially sparked like the bot use case for you guys? Uh, the idea was that we wanted to get a bot that would kind of be our primary contact for for our users mm -hmm. and and marry all these different um, knowledge places all together. Yeah, beautiful. And Bot Copy has had clients that use use the bots for several different reasons, and you guys are using it more for an internal use case, correct? That's correct. So you guys are using Dialogflow, and then you're using Bot Copy on the kind of the front end side on on your website. Um, but Dialogflow isn't necessarily easy. Uh, so can you talk about like the, the learning curve in your team? Is it just you working on the project? Have you seen? Uh, my team really was myself as kind of the, um, I know I like the technical lead, and then I had um, uh, my manager and and my second level manager uh, supporting me, uh, really doing kind of the um, the administrative work as far as getting you know funding and. Um, handling uh, risk assessments and things like that. Um, so we've, we've really just been kind of exploring and, um, but at the enterprise level we do, there are like, at the IT has their own um, chatbot teams. Like I said, it's, each department seems to have its own chatbot group that's exploring or, or mm -hmm. actually working on chatbots. Our initial use case was straight um, FAQs for our systems, um, but then with the the COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, we noticed that that uh, that we had all these task forces, and they were receiving emails and um, or tickets, and they would they would respond back when they had a chance, and then they started creating FAQ sheets where where they just spreadsheets where they would collect all these questions and then uh, from those sheets then they created Google Sites. Um, so it was kind of like the approach of letting people come and search for their uh, their answer and um, and so it started to get really complicated and and then you know then the response times you have to factor in you know like how long it takes for a person to read an email how long it takes for them to respond um, and then send out or craft a response and then send out that email. We started with one department. I'm in the um, in the product development group 
and it was just primarily just for our group. Um, and so um, we figure that that person that's writing the FAQs and is responding to emails and, and updating spreadsheets and all that stuff, it, it takes them probably, I don't know, somewhere around 14 minutes per question per user. So we, it, it kind of adds up and, and at the end of the day, um, you know, it, it can be up to seven hours, like, like seven hours of one person's time just answering these questions for just one department. And, and um, so then we started talking to other departments. Uh, we have uh, two research departments and then we have a medical affairs group. Um, and, and they're all kind of answering similar kind of questions. And so, you know, if you multiply that by three or four times, we're looking at two, three days worth of man hours. Um, so it really starts to add up and save time. And, and you, uh, guys, you guys have you guys have people um, employees all over the world, right? So sometimes in one question might be asked at you know morning in, in one person's time zone, it's evening or some other person's not working. Do you guys see that where that answer might take a couple hours to get back to that person? The person that will one like in our department, the person that was answering the questions uh, was in Australia. So that there's there's definitely that time delay where, you know, not only does it may take somebody, I mean, it might take someone 14, 15 minutes to answer that question, but you may not get that answer for a whole nother day. It, Gen and Tech is looking at you know, clinical studies and trials. Um, what What is 14 minutes or a day saved answering these questions? Is that really kind of pushing the the needle forward on making the studies a little more efficient and maybe having a solution sooner than later? I mean, a matter of, you know, just 15 minutes can mean, you know, a person's life. life. And that's just one question. And, and this all builds up. If if we're not able to ship out a, a drug to a patient or we're and not even just in the uh, the whole coronavirus pandemic situation. There's yeah. we have all kinds of different drugs that are, you know, life saving drugs that that need to get out to patients. So mm -hmm. it it really starts to add up and it makes a big difference. Once if this rolls out to several other departments and the bot starts handling, you know, potentially thousands of questions a day. Um, where do you, as far as operations wise, where do you think? Uh, like job skill sets are, are going to shift kind of to, because now these people theoretically, they don't have to answer these questions. What other tasks can you maybe put them on? To, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, really a lot of this stuff is, was added on top of what they were normally doing. So, I mean, um, you know, for example, the, the research groups, they can focus more on, on coming up with new drugs and, and making sure that, that their trials that they're working on are, are moving through quicker. I mean, we, there's a lot of efficiencies that we're already starting to build in that we've learned about. And if we can do that and speed up our trials, we can get you know, new drug, drugs out to patients. We can improve people's lives. And it's just kind of one of those things where it just starts, you know, it starts building up exponentially. You know, we, we affect mm -hmm. people's lives and then they help other people. So it's just, it's just a really good process. Excited to be a part of that process. If you had some feedback for other people kind of just getting started in their bot development, um, what, would you, what would you do differently or you know, things from the beginning? What kind of advice do you have for others watching? One of the things that you know, we hear, like anybody that's building bots or working in bots, like if it's possible, like one really good tip is to make sure that you kind of understand what those most frequently asked questions are. You know, we started getting a bunch of questions, but we weren't sure how to prioritize. If we could have like had metrics in the beginning, it wasn't really possible with this COVID because this is a new topic and it's fresh and <clears throat> we didn't have the data behind it. But if you do have the data behind it, it's good to uh, kind of prioritize what it is that you you know, what is the problem that you want to attack and what are the, the 
questions that you really want to prioritize and put on there. Um, and, um, and then really think about how you want to phrase the questions and, and make them as brief as possible. Um, a lot of times we spend a lot of time like trying to shorten, um, shorten and, and make the, uh, the questions a little more succinct. Um, mm. so I, I think those are some, some good things to look at when you're, when you're starting. Yeah, definitely. I know with, with some of your conversational design, uh, we've helped shorten those and then actually lead them to the right documentation if they want to read kind of further into a specific protocol or things of that nature. Anyway, Jim, I appreciate the time. Uh, I know you've got, you've got other things to do today, but it's always fun catching up with you. I'm sure we'll be chatting a little bit later. Um, yeah, I definitely enjoy working with you guys and, and look forward to uh, working with you some more.